It's being hailed as a pivotal year for women's football, with one of the strongest England squads for years preparing right now for the Women's World Cup in Germany. But there have also been big changes to the game at club and grassroots level, as our sports reporter Kamian Zerum explains. England's football team on their way to the World Cup. Let's not hex their chances with any rash predictions, but the women's game is undergoing something of a transformation. You know, a lot of families now are quite happy for the girls to play football. I think probably, you know, seven, eight years ago, it wasn't a, a, a game that, you know, you probably connected girls playing, but now it's, well, it's the biggest girls sport. How history repeats itself. A century ago, women's football attracted big crowds, but the FA, concerned the men were being eclipsed, banned it. Fast forward to the Premier League and the women's game has been largely left to run itself. So this year, the FA did something drastic. The Women's Super League, held over the summer so it doesn't have to compete with the men. It's early days still, but apparently it's working. Attendances are well up, although still only around 500 per game. We've actually attracted a lot of, a lot of fans from the men's game that have for the first time been to women's football and it's a bit, uh, but then they come back. Men, your normal cool. paying men punters like are going to games. Probably men like you who have never been, but then actually they, they do come back. And that, that's really nice because it is, it's a good game. It's football. And the long term targets international success. Take the Americans, currently ranked world number one and recently beaten by none other than England. Something the men, of course, failed to do in South Africa. Nonetheless, nurturing England's future female stars means cultivating the grassroots and cracking the playground. In, at primary school, I remember it was really, really, it was almost impossible for girls to even learn to play because the boys just didn't let them. Mm. Has that changed? It's changing. It's not changed totally, but it's changing. And I think that's a big positive. Obviously, when I'm going into primary schools, um, you still get the odd comments, but that's because the boys don't know any different. You know, I run a kids football team as well, and on the nines level, we have boys and girls playing in the same team, and the boys are fine with the girls playing, and, and they're happy for the girls to play. And it is that thing, is if you're good enough, they don't really care if you're a boy or a girl. It's about, are you good enough? Are you going to help us win? So, from playgrounds via Downing Street to the World Cup, Team England head to Germany next week. How far can they go? Well, according to their coach, it's her strongest squad ever.